I am responsible, along with my dad and some other people, like C. Everett Koop, for the beginning of what became known as the pro-life movement and the religious right and everything that went with it. I bitterly regret it. My dad was named Francis Schaeffer. He became a very well-known evangelical theologian. Uh, and he ran this commune in Switzerland called Labrie Fellowship, where I grew up. Dad was a figure of the left. He was, a, he, was, he was to people like Clapton and Page back in those days who were reading his stuff, the same thing that the Maharishi in India was to the Beatles. So this was an age of spiritual grooviness, all right? This is the 60s and early 70s. We made a film series called Whatever Happened to the Human Race, featuring my dad, Francis Schaefer, and Dr. C. Everett Koop, who became Ronald Reagan's Surgeon General. By the time we had taken that series to 16 cities around the country playing in auditoriums to a mostly evangelical audience, and had connected with people like Jack Kemp and other congressmen and senators in Washington who watched the series, we had begun what became the pro-life movement. They're murdering babies in that corner through abortion! What Dad got into was so fucking out of character for our family that it makes my head spin. The Godbus is, is built on a sort of a level of smooth professional bullshit, and I was very good at that. You know, when Jane Pauley and the Today Show were looking for a fundamentalist asshole for three minutes, they got me. The lure of the thing is the money because after Jerry Falwell, who was a religious right leader, lent me his private jet, put me on a speaking tour around America, after uh, I began to pull down uh, paychecks of $10,000 fees for speaking to things like the Southern Baptist Convention or the Religious Broadcasters Network. This is very heady stuff, especially if you're in your early 20s and late going, you know, beginning your own life. So imagine running into people like Jerry Falwell and Pat Robertson and realizing you have just won this prize. You won the lottery. You're going to earn hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in this bullshit and fly around in private planes. The price is you're going to spend the rest of your life with fucking idiots. And so here's what the pro-life movement managed to do. We got middle class white America and lower middle class working class America to vote against their own economic interests by getting them very pissed off on a whole series of social issues that the leaders in Washington never actually wanted to do anything about, but they manipulated them. So if they could use the Southern strategy to get people that hated black people to vote for them, they used that. Prayer in schools, they used that. Integration, they used that. Abortion is just one of those issues, but it became the match that lit the entire pyre that everything in terms of civility went up in flames and it upped the ante. So that you can get over hatred of gay people, apparently, because some people do. Gay marriage can become more acceptable. But abortion stuck. The mainstream media, the big time media, the, the three networks and the New York Times, et cetera, were not paying attention. So we were kind of waiting in the wings. We paved the way for the people who became the insiders and they are unthinkable without what we did. And so is Fox News unthinkable without what we did. And so is our talk radio. We created that audience. Alienated, angry people convinced of their own victimhood. So they became a majority while the mainstream media slept. And when everybody suddenly woke up to that fact is when George W. Bush was sitting in the White House as a totally unqualified, crazy person who launched two wars we didn't need to be in. So the fallout had a direct ramification on American history. The everyday sexism that every woman in America faces and the, the overt horrors of misogyny globally are rooted into this same issue. It is control. And that is where this thing actually stops. That is the deal. It is control. Misogyny sells. It always has. It always will. As I look back on it, I understand that the abortion issue is something that cannot be solved legislatively. It's like trying to solve broken relationships or broken marriages. It's like trying to have a country where you aren't allowed to divorce anybody and saying, you have to stay married. It has to work out. Love is forever. Well, it isn't. And, and, and abortion is no different. You know, you can't have a culture that is going to give rights to women that has an inbuilt bait and switch hook in biology. You have to level the playing field.
or you cannot have a fair culture. So abortion is simply part of the warp and woof of life. It is part of our mortality as a human being. It can no more be legislated than Niagara Falls can be dammed with a spoon. And for me personally, when I realized that, I understood something very basic, but it took a long time for me to understand that.